in the previous lecture we had seen what is cost function and we know that cost function indicates how the model is performing it is a measure of accuracy and it can be expressed as difference between actual and predicted values and in order to reduce this cost or this error we need to take the help of gradient descent algorithm so assume that as per our previous conversation also this is a hilly area or the contour graph and you are currently over here and you want to reach the minimum point which is the global optimal for the cost function then what you will do is you will start from that particular point and your goal is to reach the bottom now either you may take big steps but unfortunately what happens is in view of taking the same size of big steps you may miss out on that local point and in to cover that big distance you will skip that point you will overshoot you will cross that unknowingly and reach the point which is not equal to that local point okay so you'll miss the goal however you may think that now i should take small steps that is fine but if you keep taking small steps then you'll reach here then you'll reach here then you'll reach here it will take a lot of time many iterations will be needed so what will happen is your algorithm will not give the output fast that means you will say it will take more time for computation though you may reach this local point but it will take a lot of time and computers we are using because we want the efficiency in terms of computation faster output and so on so is there a way in which the size of steps that we take is not too small and not too large also such that we actually reach at this point okay the size of the steps is very important and in gradient descent algorithm the size of the steps can be alterated manipulated in a few ways so one intuition that you can get in terms of adjusting the size of the steps is when you are far away from the local point or you can say that when the slope or the location at which you are is quite steep you can take big steps and as soon as you reach a point which is very close to the local optimal point start taking small steps this is a solution by which the exact size of the step will be performed at the correct location at steep height or at not so steep height so big steps when the slope is steep and small steps when you are nearer to the goal so we know that slope will change at each and every point and from here where it may be a large slope here the slope is zero at the local optimal point which is the global optimal in linear regression so a slope from here to here becomes minimum and finally zero also now the size of step is determined by something called as learning rate and this learning rate and the size of step all these things are computed with the help of gradient descent algorithm learning rate is represented by alpha in this gradient descent algorithm so that errors can be minimized by the gradient descent algorithm now what is the intuition behind this gradient descent suppose we have okay before learning the intuition let me tell you the formula used in the algorithm of gradient descent gradient descent algorithm what it says is that you need to repeat certain steps that means iteration basically 
you need to perform some iteration. Just a moment. You need to perform iteration. That means repeat some steps. And these steps are nothing but calculation of a particular parameter theta. Because I told you gradient descent is used to minimize cost function and cost function is a function of theta zero, theta one. Means gradient descent will help you to choose the appropriate values of the parameters theta zero and theta one. So in order to compute those thetas, we will write some theta j is equal to that same value of theta j minus alpha deba by deba of theta j of cost function of theta theta one. Now this is not your d derivative. This is called as deba. That means partial derivative. The sign is called as deba. Partial derivative. Why partial derivative? Because you have two variables with respect to which you have to perform derivation in calculus. So it is partial derivative. Suppose we consider j as a function of only theta one as done previously by ignoring y intercept theta zero. That time what happens is it will be a complete derivative of theta one because only there's one variable. But for now we know that two parameters are involved, theta zero, theta one. So we use the partial derivative. So this calculation has to be repeated. This formula has to be repeated again and again for the values of theta zero and theta one. And in this repetition, what we have to do is we need to keep changing the values of the theta. So this is the generalization theta of J. Now this J can take values what zero and one. That means it can be theta zero or it can be theta one. So more specifically, if we want to write the gradient descent algorithm, we will say, repeat the computation of theta zero and theta one. What is the formula? Theta of J is equal to theta of, okay, some theta of J is equal to theta zero minus alpha of deba by deba theta. Now J is what over here? J is zero. So here also J we had in the formula. We have J over here. So now that J is zero. Okay. And theta one, some thing is equal to theta one minus alpha. Now say that you're finding the right hand side of these two expressions and you store the value in temp one and temp two, suppose you're using two variables, temp one and temp two to store the values of the right hand side of the equation. Now, after performing this, what you will do is to theta zero, you will assign, okay, instead of temp one and temp two, let's say t, uh, temp zero and temp one, okay? Temp zero is for theta zero, temp one is for theta one. So now after performing, after calculating temp zero and temp one, what you will do is you will store the value of temp one in theta temp zero in theta zero and the value of temp one in theta one means what change compute the changed values and then store it in this this is called a simultaneous update because if instead of t zero and t one if you use theta zero and theta one over here and here 
what will happen here instead of t uh, temp 0 you are using theta 0 only as per this formula here what it is is theta j and here also theta j means here also theta 0 here also theta 0 here also theta 1 here also theta 1 but instead of writing theta over here we are putting it in a temp j in a temporary variable because if we write theta 0 over here directly what will happen new value which is computed over here this new value you will store in theta 0 and the theta 0 value has changed now and this new theta 0 we are using over here that means whatever this old theta theta 0 was that is no longer existing because theta 0 you have updated this new theta 0 you will use to compute theta 1 but no this is not the case for the same pair of theta 0 theta 1 for the same pair of theta 0 theta 1 we need to compute this expression and this expression for same value of theta 0 and theta 1 we have to compute the right hand sides and then only store the updates which are stored in theta 0 t 0 t 1 in theta 0 theta 1 okay if you directly put theta 0 theta 1 over here you will lose the previous values there will be updations in theta 0 which will then affect theta 1 so calculating theta 1 for this old theta 0 you will miss out on that that is why do the updation in this way use temporary variables and then store the value of temporary variables in theta 0 and theta 1 Now, let us discuss about how the formula will help in reaching the global minimum point, that is the optimum cost function. Suppose this is our graph of cost function against the parameter theta 1, ignoring the constant y intercept theta 0, considering cost function to be a function only of theta 1, what we will do is, suppose theta 1 value is over here. Then consider theta 1 value here also. So if this is the value is A and this is the value of B, can we say A is less than B? this value of theta 1, this a, and this value of theta 1, that means this b, don't you think that a is less than b? Yes, because as we go to the right hand side, value of theta 1 is increasing. So a is definitely less than b. Okay. So in this way, theta 1 is increasing. And in this way, theta 1 is decreasing. Okay. So now, as I told you, in 2D, the graph that we get is this one. Okay. Now, Here, this slope is what it is negative. For this particular line, it is negative. And for this particular line, the slope is what? Positive. How can we find out the slope from the curve? Because if you draw a tangent like this and you subtend or extend a right angle triangle, this is a value, some angle, some angle, say gamma, then the slope of this line, slope of this line is nothing but tan of gamma, tan of that angle. So at whichever point on the curve you want to find the slope, draw a tangent to that and form the triangle and take the tan of that angle. 
Okay. This is the way to find slopes. Now, here, this is the value of theta 1. Now, if we consider a formula, what does a formula say? Theta 1 is equal to theta 1 minus alpha of d by d theta 1 of j of theta 0. Theta 1. And since we are ignoring theta 0, only theta 1. Okay. Now observe that alpha is always positive. Okay. Alpha is always positive. Alpha is what? Learning rate. So, as we are going down, as we are approaching the local or global optimum in this case, what is happening? Here the slope is something and here the slope becomes zero. Means what? Slope is reducing. Okay. If slope is reducing, what will be and uh, when slope is reducing also note that value of theta 1 is increasing am i right as slope is reducing that means as theta 1 is increasing slope is reducing this way and we are going theta 1 this way so as theta 1 we are approaching what happens actually theta 1 increases as the slope decreases Okay, so if theta 1 is increasing, then the derivative when we solve, it will be a positive value only, right? Uh, so this is negative slope. Okay, this is negative slope. We are coming down this way. Means for this negative slope, theta 1 is increasing, means what will be the value over here? When the slope is negative, the derivative comes out to be negative, okay? Please consider now what I'm saying. When the slope is negative, the slope is decreasing, the derivative of that slope, that means the slope is itself negative, the derivative itself is the slope, okay? Whenever we say d by d theta of something, this whole thing indicates the slope of that particular position or location. So we know that the derivative which indicates the slope is negative. The derivative is negative. So what will happen is when the derivative is negative, this whole value that we will get here is negative. So we can rewrite this as So when the slope is negative, this will become theta 1 minus alpha, some negative value. So negative and negative will become what positive? That means you get theta 1 plus alpha. That means whatever previous value of theta 1 we had, we are adding some alpha in that. Means theta 1 is definitely going to increase. We are adding some value and alpha is always positive. So we are always adding some positive value in this particular case. So theta 1 will increase. Theta 1 will increase, theta 1 will increase, and will keep going this way, right? Because theta 1 is increasing, theta 1 is increasing. That means along the curve, if we are traversing, we are coming down, 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 and approaching this local point. Because we know that as theta 1 increases, we are approaching the minimum bottom point, okay? At which, at the minimum bottom point, the slope will be zero and theta one will be some value. So this is when we are at the left half of that curve, negative slope side. What will happen when we are at the positive slope side? Hmm. 
when we are at the positive slope. What can we say? We can say that we know the formula is theta 1 is equal to theta 1 minus alpha d by d theta 1 or d. Now, when we are at the positive slope, what will happen? The slope is positive. If slope is positive, value of slope, slope is nothing but positive and slope is given by or represented by d by d theta of something and that something here is j. So slope is positive means this entire derivative is positive. If this entire derivative is positive, we can say that theta 1 is equal to theta 1 minus alpha of some positive value. Now Positive and negative will become negative only. So this will become theta 1 minus alpha. And we know alpha is always positive. So from theta 1, we are reducing some value. That means theta 1 will what? It will decrease. Right? Theta 1 will decrease. So based on, the, based on this formula, we are manipulating the value of theta 1. Or you can say theta 1 is reducing or theta 1 is increasing. Right? Because of this formula, because of the signs that are changing based on the slope, based on the derivative, the value of theta 1 is either increasing or decreasing. And just now we have seen that when we were at the negative slope, because of this formula and because of negative slope, value of theta 1 kept on increasing. And now we reached the zeroth location. Okay. So successfully, we have reached the global optimum point. Suppose we did not start from the negative slope end. We started from the positive slope end. We started at the positive side. Slope is positive. Theta 1 value kept on decreasing. So if we start at this particular point, then what happens is due to the alpha, due to the negative sign, positive sign, due to the slope, which is positive, due to the slope which is positive, the value of theta 1 will go on decreasing, right? Because we'll keep on subtracting alpha from that. Whenever there is positive slope, we will keep on subtracting alpha from theta 1, due to which theta 1 will keep on reducing. Okay? So since theta 1 is reducing, we came from this particular point to this lower point, minimum point. So did you see that? How the formula of gradient descent is helping adjust the value of theta 1 so that based on that theta 1, we can come along the curve from wherever we are, from here or from here, we can come to the local optimum point. So let me summarize this. When we have a graph of cost function against theta 1, If we are starting over here, uh, if you remember, we were on this hill. So we either started from here or we can start from here also, anywhere. Our starting position is dependent on the initial values of theta 0, theta 1. So wherever we start from, our main aim is to reach this local point. So suppose we start from here. We know that slope is negative. And since it is negative slope, the value of theta 1 will get, have an addition of alpha always. So theta 1 increases. And if we are on the positive side, if we are starting from here, our slope is positive. We know that the value of theta 1 will get reduced by alpha. And so theta 1 will keep on decreasing. So wherever we are, because of gradient descent, we'll keep approaching here, then here, then here, then here, then here, and finally we'll reach here. Or if we are over here, we'll keep reducing theta 1, and finally we'll reach here. But on reaching here, 
on reaching here, if we compute using the formula of gradient descent, what will happen? We have seen negative slope, positive slope. At this particular point, what is the slope? I have already mentioned that at the local or global optimum, the slope is zero. Now, if slope is zero, our formula theta one is equal to theta one minus alpha d by d theta one of j. The slope, which is zero, represented by this derivative. The value of derivative will also become zero. Since the value of derivative is becoming zero, this whole term becomes zero. That means theta one is theta one. That means theta one will remain constant. Whatever is the value of theta one on reaching this point, theta one will have that value only. Means theta one will get stuck at this point. Means we'll reach at the local optimum and will not go anywhere after that. So this is how gradient descent will help us reach from any particular point. From any particular point, gradient descent will help us reach that global optimum point because of that formula by manipulating the values of theta one. Either on positive side, negative side, and here when the slope becomes zero. Okay, I hope this is clear. So, as per our conversation till now, what we have seen is that it is alpha who is responsible in incrementing or decrementing the value. By alpha, the value will get increased of theta 1 or for theta 1, the value will get decreased by alpha. So alpha is nothing but the one which determines the step size. This particular steps that we are taking, the size of these steps, the size of these steps is determined by alpha. <clears throat> so alpha is the step size which needs to be the correct magnitude according to which our descent will be determined. Now, some points to be noted about this alpha learning rate. If alpha is very small, what will happen? By small amounts, theta 1 will increase or by small amounts, theta 1 will decrease. So, number of iterations that we will take, small decrease, small decrease, small decrease, small decrease, or if we start from a small Decrease, small decrease, small decrease, small decrease. Here, yeah, sorry, it was small increase, and here it is small decrease. So it will take a lot of computation to reach here. On the other hand, if alpha is very large, then what will happen is big increase, big increase, then suddenly we'll overshoot because our alpha will remain constant. So we'll miss this minimum point. Then from here, we may go this way, we'll rebound, and then this way, and this way. Or if we start from your big steps, we'll go this way, this way, this way. And it will rebound, and it will keep on going higher, lower, or it will not reach the global minimum point. So alpha must be such that in the beginning, sufficiently large, and towards the end, it should be small. But we know that alpha is constant. Then how to manipulate this alpha? So remember that keep alpha constant, okay? Keep alpha constant, don't change alpha. And based on this gradient descent, based on the slopes that keep occurring, based on the theta value that is getting generated and updated each time, it will automatically converge. No need to alter alpha. Automatically, the based on the theta one, we know that theta one will either get increased or theta one will get decreased by a constant amount. Theta one is variable. So keep changing theta one and keep alpha constant. That is the idea here. Okay. So gradient descent can converge to the local optimum point, local optimum point, even if alpha is fixed, it will take smaller steps automatically as it approaches the local side. Step size will decrease automatically because theta one will vary, alpha will remain constant.
Okay, so I'll just summarize what you have studied about linear regression till now. First point, it is a supervised ML technique. That means we have labeled data. That means we have a supervisor in the data set. Next is linear regression can be of two. Uh, linear regression is where the relationship is of the order one that is linear. Next, we have seen that there is a difference between predicted and actual value. And this difference is called error or residue, which needs to be minimized. And how do we calculate, how do we make the prediction? By the formula, H of x is equal to theta 0 plus theta 1. By this formula, we'll do the prediction, but then we come to know that our prediction and actual value, there's a difference called as error. So we need to minimize the error. And in order to minimize the error, which is represented by cost function, which is given by the formula J of theta zero, theta one, equal to one upon two M, summation of i is equal to 0 to m of h of x minus 1. This is the cost function which needs to be reduced. Means appropriate values of theta 0, theta 1 need to be calculated. Means we need to find out an algorithm called as gradient descent, which will manipulate the value of theta accordingly from wherever we start on the positive side or negative side of the graph. And this gradient descent is nothing but a repetition of the steps like theta of j is equal to theta of j minus alpha d by d theta of j of theta z theta one. And we need to perform simultaneous update. Of theta zero and theta one. So finally we'll get the optimum or required values of theta zero and theta one. That means we'll get the optimum values. If H of X is theta zero plus theta one, we are going to get the optimum values of theta zero and theta one. And then for given new values of X, we can make good predictions of the output one. This is the idea behind linear regression. Until now, we have only seen linear regression in one variable, or we can say simple linear regression, where only one feature x and only one output y. Okay, so th that is it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll see multiple linear regression or multivariate linear regression in which we don't have x, but we have multiple inputs, that is x1, x2, and so on, multiple features. Thank you.